Meanwhile, in Beijing, winds of change are blowing. Xi Jinping has ordered another crackdown. Doesn't sound like change, does it? But it is. This crackdown is of a different kind. The president of China is reining in the capitalists within the communists. They can no longer pay monopoly, play monopoly with their money. Private equity investments are banned in China, and that is the big headline. If you're a member of the Communist Party, you cannot put your money in private equity funds anymore. He'll tell you why. But first, let's answer the basic question, what are private equity funds? They're private investment ventures. They operate like any other mutual fund. Investors contribute capital. The fund manager creates a pool and then decides where this money will be invested. But these private funds are not open for everyone. Usually, they're reserved for the rich. These funds have elite clients. There is a high entry barrier. In this case, it is $137,000. That should be your minimum investment. If you want to enter a high profile private fund in China, you need at least $137,000. And where does the money go? Private funds normally invest in unlisted firms, companies that are yet to go public or list on the stock market. When capitalism boomed in China, private equity became attractive. Kids of high-ranking Chinese officials were drawn towards it. In China, they're called princelings, children of the high and mighty. And they scripted many success stories. Stories of these princelings getting involved in private equity and making tons of money. Like Liu Tianran, son of Liu He, a former vice premier of China, he founded a company called Skyus Capital. It invested in leading tech businesses, the likes of Tencent and JD.com. Then we have Alvin Jiang, grandson of Jiang Zemin, a former president of China. He set up his own private equity firm. It's called Boyu. It's based in Hong Kong. Boyu was an early investor in Alibaba, the Chinese e-commerce giant. So how did these people make it big? What's the secret to their success? Not so much their business acumen as their political connections. And now many party officials are trying to replicate this formula. They've set up their own private funds and they're using their access to get insider information. So when their companies are listed, they make windfall profits. Now Xi Jinping is targeting these private funds. The crackdown began last year. First, top officials were asked to file reports to declare their private equity investments. If they had any relationship with the fund, they had to declare that too. And now the party has ordered a total ban. But there could be a loophole. We don't know if this ban extends to the children of party officials or to their relatives. Either way, Xi Jinping will be keeping an eye. He's shaking up the entire banking and finance industry of China. Top bankers are under investigation. As of April this year, over a dozen senior, senior executives had been investigated in China. A rejig is underway at state-owned banks too. This year, they have cut salaries. They've also slashed perks for their staff. China's spy agency is getting involved too. It is called the Ministry of State Security. This week, they made an announcement. They released a post on Chinese social media. It called the agency, and I'm quoting, Guardians of, fin of Financial Security. That's what they called the agency. Let me also quote from that post that they put out. There are not only bears and short sellers, but also naysayers and undercutters who attempt to shake international investment confidence in China and trigger domestic financial turmoil. At least they're admitting it. That there is a risk of domestic financial turmoil in China. But unleashing spies on investors is hardly the problem to this solution. 